some air in the tires because just go put it on there and see if it'll start. I don't know. Or, yeah, on the two. Okay, it's filling automatically. Yeah, it just started here. There are 34. Okay, we felt like we weren't getting really good fuel mileage. Well, it's, the, the car was just rocking side to side. It's been on. At least this is the only free thing you can get here. Getting your waterproof gear on. Well, you have to here. You don't do it here, you get really wet. Yeah. It's so windy here. Look at the yeah, waterfall. Yeah, I'm gonna put a sweatshirt on too. It's gotten a little chilly since the sun went away. Our first stop on the Ring Road was Cellulance Foss. This waterfall drops 197 feet, and what makes it so unique is that you can walk behind it. know our video yeah. is not going to give it justice, but it is massive. Yep. Nothing I've ever seen before. Cellulins Foss, here on the Ring Road in the south side, right after Hella. So check it out. out. So that's perfect. Ready for the next adventure? Let's go. Goodbye, beautiful waterfall. So there are 91 caves in the country, but um, only a few of them still remain. I think 41 of them. This is one of them they preserved uh, for you to stop and look at. Anyways, this cave was used to store hay and probably who knows what else, but I read hay on there. But this is uh, pretty cool. Let's check it out.
right, we got all geared up again. Let's go get wet. All right, so this is the next 30 minutes down the road from Sagulins Foss, Skoga Foss. Another huge uh, waterfall, man. It is just, and you can hear it. Yeah. It's just really big. We're it's, not even all that close to it. Yeah. So. We're still 100 yards from it, so beautiful. Yeah. Right off the road, you don't even have to pay to park here, so. This one's a freebie. Let's yep. go check out the waterfall. Yep. we did so we really wanted this was a big stop for us so we're gonna take you guys out here and show you what it looks like there's so many people here though from <laughs> yeah like tours, tours tour buses yeah, it's going to be very busy out mm -hmm. here but they got a wall of basalt a basalt wall that i want to climb on yeah and the kid of me comes out in that kind of situation yeah so they're pretty neat so all right let's walk in and see So one of the things I, re I saw in my research was this beach is where a lot of people's lives get claimed, mainly because this water will sneak up on you. Over in that corner, people get out there and it gets narrower. The beach will have a rogue wave come in and once it sucks you out, it's got an undertow to it and you can't get back and the water's icy cold. And that's how people die here in Iceland, mainly here in this spot. Woo. That is cold. Yeah. That's very cool. This 
this the uh, glacier? This is Vatna Yokel, the largest glacier. I think it's the largest glacier or second largest glacier in Europe, all of Europe. But we are camping a little further in. So there's a campground. Oh, down the road, like 20 miles down the road. So we're going to stay at that campground, so yes. that's where we're heading. It was only, it was 5,000 Corona. I don't know why they needed to know, put USA on there, mm. but they did. Or USA. Um, simple, they just made me go online and scan this thing, go online, put in the car size. Uh, did you say dinky? <laughs> well, <laughs> it didn't, wasn't an option. <laughs> <laughs> then I had to put in the license plate number, which I know now because I had to memorize it the other day. Yeah. But we're in site either B or D, any, any space in B or D. Okay. So go this way. Let's go look around. I don't kill it with a clutch. Now something tells me this isn't uh, labeled very well. All right guys, just a quick synopsis of where we came from, where we're at and where we've been, or where we're going. So we flew into Keflavik. We got our rental car. And we came up here to Thingvillir National Park where we swam in the fissure and we Came over here, we went up here to see Gulf Us, back down to Lagervatten where we spent last night. From Lagervatten, we came down to Selfoss and we just followed one all the way around to where we are right now in Skaftafell. When we leave tomorrow, we're gonna stay on one. We're gonna check out a lot of stuff through here, but we're coming way up here on the east side, the Sadis Fjorder, and that'll be Wednesday night. Thursday morning, we're gonna leave Sadis Fjorder we're going to come back out, come back up here to Mivatn, the Mivatn Lake. We're camping right on the lake. After we leave there, we got a big day. We're going to come all the way through here. We'll be through, horseback riding that day, too. Yeah, we're going through Akiati, over here to horseback ride. Then we're coming way up here into uh, this campground. It's right in this area. The name's not on here because it's just out in the middle of nowhere. And so we're covering a lot of distance here. Then we're going to follow this road to Dinyandi, which is a really cool waterfall. Coming back out, we are coming down a little bit south, right in this area, to spend the night. And then we're going to come through the Snaffelsness Peninsula. We're coming around. And when we come out, we're coming down through here, and we're staying in a Cranes for our last night here. The next morning, before we catch our flight, because we have an evening flight, we're coming into Reykjavik, the town, and we're going to spend about eight hours in Reykjavik before we head back to the airport. So that is our Iceland trip in a nutshell. And two minutes or under. What is it like in the 40s? It's getting very cold tonight. We found a little trail. The National Park, which you can see behind me, the building, the National Park is situated right by the campground, so we are camping in the National Park the of the Glacier. Visitor Center, not the National Park. Or, I'm park. sorry, the Visitor Center of the National Botany Park. Yoko National Park, which is this mountain range up here. Any good translator. He did so good. Yoko means glacier. I do, do you know that? There was a little pathway here. It looks like it takes you straight to the edge of the glacier, so we're going to see if that is what we're seeing. And we were getting chilly. Yeah. So we're going to take a walk. So, of course, yeah. this one finds, just happens to find oh. a trail. It was, was meant to be. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't <laughs> notice. Whatever. I didn't notice until I, we walked over here because I wanted to show them the visitor center because it was so well done. Anyways, let's see what we find out. You know, it's a little crazy when you're taking a summer vacation and you have to pack your hand warmers. These are rechargeable, which I'm glad I have.
Good morning. Made it through the night. No rain. Yeah, it didn't rain. Can't believe it. But it is behind you. You can tell it's. Yeah. It looks like it could at any and moment. All we asked for was the ability to get out of here dry. Well, might happen. Just threw the table down on the ground and trying to make coffee. Here, let me hear that again. That's beautiful. It's just it is what it is, what it is right? into the water when they're small enough they float out to the ocean but then the waves of the ocean the tide of the ocean put them back onto the ocean. all right so as you see they call this diamond beach think of like your jeweler putting a black mat out and dumping diamonds on it that's kind of what this looks like the black sand with the ice the clear crystal ice pushed up on here Now on the Ring Road, we knew we were in for some amazing sights. The Ring Road is Route 1, and it circles the whole country. We started by going to two different waterfalls, both of them unique and very powerful. They were Cellulans Foss and Skoga Foss. I've never been so impressed by waterfalls in my life. From there, it was off to Rainus Fjada Black Beach, a totally unique beach with black sand from the heavy volcanic activity that Iceland has been blessed and cursed with. Our campsite was at the base of the second largest glacier in Europe. Kind of cool to say the least. We started the next day with the brisk air provided by the glacier. I don't know what it is about mountains and glaciers, but I really enjoy them. Next it was off to Diamond Beach. This is where icebergs fall from the glacier, and once in the ocean, they get pushed back onto a black beach. It's much like a jeweler placing diamonds on a black velvet cloth. The ice crystals popped on the black sands. As we keep driving east, I can't wait to see what's around the next bend. Happy glamping.